Well, we have no shortage of struggles here on Earth at the moment, so let's get a bit of a cosmic perspective now and take a look at some of the extraordinary endeavours mankind is undertaking in space. NASA recently tested its new rocket system. It hopes it will take us back to the moon and on to Mars. For more on this and the various other ambitious ongoing space projects, I spoke with NASA's Associate Administrator, Steve Jerzyk. Political squabbles on Earth can also impact what we do in space. There's been concern in the US and here in Australia about China stealing intellectual property, including scientific and engineering IP, as well as China's military activities in space. Is China a NASA rival, and how concerned are you about China's space program? Yeah, we are. <coughs> we are. We are trying to uh, maintain the peaceful uses of space. And uh, one of the ways we're doing that is through uh, what we call the Artemis Accords, that if you want to collaborate with us on our Artemis lunar missions, you have to um, adhere to some norms of behavior in space. Now, right now, we are, NASA uh, is prohibited from um, direct collaboration with China. Um, so that's not a means by which we can um, influence what China is doing in space. So, and uh, we are concerned about um, uh, you know, the, the militarization of space um, and uh, being able to continue to operate our missions and, and do what we need to do as a civil space agency. Well, on to the uh, inspiring stuff. The NASA Artemis mission aims to land a woman on the moon by 2024 and set up a lunar base by 2028. Now, there's a lot involved in Artemis, a lot of new technologies required, like robotics and spacesuits, etc. What role do you think Australia can play, and how can Aussies get in on the action? Well, one thing that we've been talking with uh, both the Australian space agencies and and uh, and, comp and uh, Australia industry is what we call in situ resource utilization, um, and that's using the resources of the moon or hopefully eventually Mars um, to ever to do everything from um, manu manufacturing and construction of um, facilities on the lunar surface to extracting the frozen water um, from the permanently shadowed craters on the moon and processing that water into potable water or um, oxidizer or, e or fuel. So I think that's one way that um, the National Space Agency of Australia can collaborate with, say, the oil and gas industry and other industries um, to help enable, uh, enhance our capabilities to have long duration, duration missions on the surface of the moon and then develop technologies and capabilities that are going to be required if we're going to eventually send people to Mars. There's a big movement now around the commercialization of space, getting private companies involved. Now, you recently had a SpaceX craft take your astronauts to, into space, and there are other partnerships that you have with private companies. Meanwhile, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are racing to get to Mars. What do you say to those who are concerned that these companies are effectively taking over space exploration? Yeah, I think our approach right now, and we'll see how this plays out, is to really use the use and leverage the capabilities um, that, say, SpaceX and Blue Origin, are, Blue Origin are developing to advance our Artemis plan. And we, we believe that we will continue, in, at least in the foreseeable future, to have government-to-government -government agreements where we're using not only U.S. commercial capabilities, um, but also um, capabilities of other nations uh, industrial uh, partners to advance space exploration. Now, um, you know, I know particularly Elon Musk has ambitions uh, of a, a very large scale, uh, you know, mission to Mars, and we'll see how that evolves. But in the near term, we're trying to partner and leverage those capabilities that are being developed now for our, our Artemis missions. And finally, it would be remiss of me not to ask you about the videos of UFOs the Pentagon declassified earlier this year. What's the scoop, sir? Have you got any inside knowledge about this one? Can you confirm we're not alone? Uh, no, I have no inside knowledge of any UFOs, not even the latest one. And I, I 
unfortunately, so far, I, I, can, I cannot confirm that we're not alone.